Hi everyone, welcome to Chet Jamaican. I am your lady Tanya and I want to thank you for tuning in to Uplifting Mondays, where every Monday I will uplift your soul. Today I will be giving you eight personal finance tips that will make you less stressed and should help you with your ultimate goal of increasing your overall wealth. If you are living from paycheck to paycheck with nothing, nothing, nothing to show at the end of the month, what you need to do is manage your money better. And if you do not have any money issues, you still can listen, make improvements here and there, and the advice in this video should help you do just that. Having good financial skills improves your quality of life in all kinds of ways. You will not have no debt hanging over your head, meaning you don't owe nobody nothing, and you will get a warm, satisfying feeling at the end of the month when you see you still have a decent sum of money left that you put towards savings or investment here are eight ways to manage your money better come and chat with Tanya number one make a budget every month very few people actually do this and it is very important reason why this is not done is that it can be very painful looking at the figures that you have to deal with so a lot of people avoid it it might not be fun but you need to get this building block in place and you will see life improve and all kind of financial worries will disappear a budget is a snapshot of the money you have going in and coming out take a piece of paper or better still keep a notebook and divide the pages into two on the left you should keep the money coming in from salary and any other sources of income that is the easy part the hard part is the money you expect to go out which you should estimate at the start of the month this should include household bills and living costs what you expect you will spend on food and other essential items also travel expenses for your car or public transport leisure restaurant entertainment sports trips and holidays and the items that is easy to forget about like money you expect to spend on presents for family or friends also add in any other regular payments you have to make this could be insurance subscriptions or debt repayments also on the expenses side set a target for savings as well as a small but regular amount for contribution to an emergency fund the left and right side should add up to the same amount if your expenses are more than your income you will need to find places where you can cut them down if you are lucky you will have more income than expense then you could either add more to your saving target or you could just buy a little extravagance and increase the bill for say leisure or luxury food shopping but one thing once you have made the budget the most important thing is you do not put it away in a drawer and let it gather dust use it throughout the month to guide your spending decisions and try really hard not to overspend anywhere even if you don't quite manage it in your first month don't worry as long as you are not too far off and after your first goal you will become more realistic with your predicted expenses and overcome if you put your mind to it balancing your budget should start to come naturally number two consult your budget for large spending decisions listen to this common mistake you want to buy something nice a holiday a new laptop or an extravagant gift and you just being paid so you know you have the money in the bank to cover it well do not assume you have got the disposable income for it a large chunk of the money in the bank is going to have to go towards basic living expenses which should of course be indicated in your budget 
check your budget and see if you can justify the expense in the relevant category. If you are thinking of booking an expensive holiday and your budget for leisure covers it, then go ahead. But if you do not, that means if you pay for it at the end of the month, your budget will be in chaos. But what do you do? The answer is to save up for it and include the amount you are saving each month in your budget. Work out how much you can set aside for each month and how long it will take you to save up. And while you are saving, you might even decide you do not really need it after all. Number three, keep track of smaller expenses too. Small purchases here and there creep up on us. And if we do not keep check on them, sometimes they can lead us in depths the next time the paycheck comes or your money comes in. A meal out and a birthday present for a relative there. We often forget to factor these in, but they really do add up. And when you hear people saying they do not know where all their money goes, it is actually on loads of small to medium purchases they forgot all about. If this is a problem for you, you should try writing down all you are spending in a journal. If you are keeping a budget, any small purchase you made could be covered in some sections of it. If you have blown your whole monthly budget or just leisure or just two meals out, you know you need to make some changes here. Keep track of everything and pretty soon you will be able to see where it is all going and how you can cut down on things you do not really need. Number four, get your debt under control. Get your debt under control or better still get rid of it. But if you have debts, the first step to have them under control. First of all, do not take on any new debts especially outstanding credit cards bills as these have really high interest rates. If you have trouble paying them off, ditch the credit card altogether. Second, schedule all of your debt payments and make sure you pay them on time. At the very least, make them minimum payments, but if you can pay more than the minimum, even better, because the longer it takes you to pay them off, the more interest you will end up paying. If you have a number of debts, make a list of what the interest is on each one. First, work to pay off the one with the highest rates. Number five. Keep track of your monthly payments and limit them. It could be anything you do not really need or not going to use that much. It could be an inactive gym membership or membership in a shopping establishment you made so you could use it once and then just forget about it. It has already been going for more than a year. Remember that more and more businesses use subscriptions-based business models these days. That is because they realize that it is a small amount they are charging every month. A lot of people will go for it without even thinking about it. But small amounts add up when you have got a lot of them and they are eating away at your earnings every month. If it is really necessary or useful, keep it. But do try to limit the amount you have. Number six. Have an emergency fund. Always put aside some money for the unexpected. You will never know when you will need it. Unexpected repairs on your car or house or a piece of equipment that you need to buy because something broke. Unexpected medical expenses you are not insured for. Or if you do not have an emergency fund, you will be digging into other expenses for these. If you have some money set aside and can be covered on your budget, you could set aside a small amount of money into this each month and only dip into it if it is a real emergency. Whenever possible, unexpected expenses come up, try to justify them in another part of your spending. Number seven, have a monthly savings goal and keep it in a separate savings account. 
you must always want to increase your wealth and keeping money in the bank is not going to help you with this interest rates on bank account are close to zero make your money work for you for better options and investing in bonds a portfolio of stock or real estate and you will not be able to buy these without disposable income which will come from your savings that is why you should have a savings goal each month and put it on your budget you will find that having a savings goal really will motivate you to save that is because the thought of having that money for investment that will help at the end of the month and the long-term wealth they will bring you will be even more tempting than unnecessary purchasing and until you decide on what kind of investment to put them into, place them in a savings account, which is separate from your regular bank account savings account do have slightly higher interest rate than bank accounts but they are still small the benefit is by keeping your savings in a separate place you are less likely to spend it and in the end this money will go towards what is intended for long-term investments number eight constantly improve your knowledge of money management do not feel like a beginner when it comes to managing your finances because every finance expert on finance management was once a beginner. Invest in some courses on personal finance. You will be able to find free or moderately priced online courses in personal finance which share in-depth advice on how to spend less and save more, manage your money better and how to invest it. That is the end of our eight ways on managing your money and I would like to know which one of these suggestions do you think you will find the most useful to manage your money better? Let me know in the comments. Also, remember there are lots of people in your position. If you are unable to gain financial stability, start with step one and create a budget. Then you have got to force yourself to take all the steps in it. At first, you may find it difficult, but stick with it. And over time, it will come naturally to you. Pretty soon, you will see yourself getting less money related headaches and you will realize that you have more money left at the end of the month before you know it you will feel motivated to follow the steps and you will not even need to push yourself to do them by then you will have mastered discipline when it comes to personal finance thank you for watching chat jamaican and spending some time with me make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video tune in for next week uplifting monday's video thanks for watching Lick more